Once again, there are calls for a ceasefire just when Israel seems to be badly hurting its opponent. But this is a replay of what happened in 2006, and it didn't work back then. I'm Hanan Lishinsky. Welcome to another All Israel News Update, where this time we'll look at the history of the proposed ceasefires between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. On Thursday morning, a joint statement led by the United States in conjunction with several other uh, Western countries called for a 21-day ceasefire on the Lebanon and Israel border. Now, this call for a ceasefire does not mention Hezbollah directly, which is one of the main parties in this conflict, but it calls on the governments of uh, Lebanon and Israel to agree on a truce across the uh, border between them to enable more space for diplomacy and find a permanent solution for the conflict, which again is between Hezbollah and Israel, but despite this, Hezbollah isn't mentioned in the call for a ceasefire at all. The most important UN resolution regarding the issue of the conflict between Lebanon and Israel is UN Resolution 1701, which was intended to end the Second Lebanon War in 2006 and lead to a permanent uh, resolution to the conflict. But as we saw uh, and as we have been seeing these past 11 months, this UN resolution did not achieve its goals and instead the fighting between Hezbollah and Israel has continued sporadically over the past years and has broken out once again over the last year. Israel continues to support UN Resolution 1701. This resolution called for the permanent cessation of hostilities between Hezbollah and Israel in the uh, 2006 Lebanon war. It also called for the disarmament of any group in Lebanon except for the Lebanese uh, army, the LAF, the Lebanese Armed Forces, as well as the UN uh, Armed uh, Peacekeeper Force, UNIFIL, and th those two groups, the Lebanese army and UNIFIL, were supposed to be the only armed groups in Lebanon, and they were especially supposed to be the only groups controlling the area that is close to the Israeli border. In southern Lebanon, there is the Litani River. And the Litani River, basically everything that's south of the Litani River is called southern Lebanon. This is one of the main areas where Hezbollah has uh, its supporters, where it has its strongholds, uh, weapon uh, depots, rocket launchers, and everything else. And according to UN Resolution 1701, Hezbollah was supposed to evacuate, to leave this area completely and leave it to UNIFIL and the Lebanese army to control this area. And they were supposed to prevent any attacks from being launched from this area against Israel. This obviously has failed. It hasn't just failed on uh, October 8, when uh, Hezbollah started its current ongoing incessant attacks against Israel, but it has failed over the past years, over the past a decade since 2006. And this res resolution is widely, widely being seen as a failed resolution that didn't do anything to uh, permanently end this conflict. In fact, just weeks after this resolution ended the Lebanon war, Hezbollah just returned to the area south of the Litani and established itself uh, in this area and became stronger than ever before. And now this led to the situation that we have today where Hezbollah is uh, seen as one of the strongest armed forces in the world, comparable to many regular armies and much stronger than the Lebanese armed forces and UNIFIL who are powerless to do anything against it. The reasons for the failure of UN Resolution 1701 are simple. There was never any effective enforcement mechanism and the only power strong enough to enforce it was Israel. So UNIFIL and the Lebanese Armed Forces, as I said, are two very weak uh, organizations, small compared to Hezbollah, and Hezbollah just ignored the resolution and went on doing what it had been doing. If you want to read an in-depth explainer about UN Resolution 1701, what it called for and what its failures were, you can click the link here to read more. As mentioned, Hezbollah immediately returned to the areas that it very briefly evacuated. And in fact, it was pushed out of these areas by Israel during the war. So it returned there. Iran, Hezbollah's main backer, immediately resumed funding and uh, resumed and in fact increased rapidly the uh, transfers of weapons, ammunition and equipment. And this made Hezbollah much stronger than it has been uh, that it was before the war. The only fact on the ground that this resolution had was to prevent Israel from uh, harming Hezbollah whenever it saw that Hezbollah was trying to rearm 
or to advance or uh, to do any of the things that it went on doing. Israel supported the resolution, it accepted the resolution and sharply decreased its uh, airstrikes in, in Lebanon basically to nothing and thus allowing uh, Hezbollah to rearm itself. Israel tried to disrupt Hezbollah's supply network by bombing uh, trucks and uh, other vehicles carrying weapons from Iran through Iraq and Syria to Lebanon, but they were very rarely uh, were there attacks in Lebanon itself. And this basically was the only outcome that Resolution 1701 had, was to prevent Israel from harming Hezbollah when it needed to. This enabled Hezbollah to become what it is today. It is basically a state within a state. It is by far the strongest armed group in Lebanon. It has partly taken over the government. It has partly taken over many civilian infrastructures. And one of the uh, best examples for this is the Lebanese uh, airport in Beirut, the main airport of the country, where Hezbollah has built a whole wing which uh, only serves its weapon tr uh, transfers and is off limits to anyone else, even the official Lebanese government. And if you want to read more about the airport and uh, Hezbollah's takeover of the country, you can click the link here in the corner. Having looked at the failures of the past, now let's turn to the main topic of the day, which again is a call for a ceasefire on the Israeli-Lebanese border, but which doesn't man uh, mention Hezbollah, which is the main aggressor in all of this. This, understandably, I think has uh, made many Israelis very angry. Many politicians, not just from the government coalition, have criticized this push for a ceasefire, which many in Israel see as uh, coming just at the moment when Israel has been hurting Hezbollah badly, when it has been degrading its uh, weapons arsenal, and basically for the first time in 11 months has had the focus and the resources to really hurt Hezbollah after focusing mainly on Gaza. And this is the moment when the international community sees fit to call for a ceasefire without even mentioning Hezbollah, which, just uh, as a reminder, again, has started the fighting on October 8th, uh, unprovoked, started to shoot rockets, drones, anti-tank missiles at Israeli towns, and has uh, caused the evacuation of some 80,000 Israelis, uh, 60,000 or, or uh, around this area, are still evacuated, still haven't returned to their homes. And it has to be said, this may be uh, a bit strange for many of our international viewers, but those in Israel who are the most vocal about calling for an all-out war against Hezbollah and for the continuation of the airstrikes are those uh, residents of northern Israel, even those who haven't been evacuated and who would, for the coming months, live in a war zone. They are the ones calling for an all-out war, for a ground invasion, to remove the threat of Hezbollah hanging above their heads. So if you're looking at what's going on today on Thursday, uh, just before the filming of this video, Netanyahu's press office uh, said that there would be no ceasefire today, but it didn't categorically deny that there would be any ceasefire whatsoever in the coming uh, days ahead, possibly. If we're looking at media reports, they suggested that Netanyahu did give the green light to uh, Strategic Affairs Minister Dermel to lead a team that would be tasked with uh, holding talks about a possible ceasefire. However, Israel has made it clear that a red line in these talks would be the evacuation of the area south of the Litani of any Hezbollah forces. While Hezbollah has been badly hurt by the last weeks of fighting, it seems very unlikely that it is so badly hurt that it would be ready to agree to those terms, the terms proposed in the ceasefire. Instead, Hezbollah has continued to claim that it would only stop attacking Israel if the war in Gaza would stop as well. It appears that the American government, the Biden administration, has latched on to this uh, claim or this promise and also seems to uh, aim for an agreement that would connect the northern front, Israel's northern front with Lebanon, with its southern front against Gaza. And the Biden administration officials have reiterated that they seek an agreement that would both uh, end the fighting in the north and in the south and also bring about uh, the return of the Israeli hostages, a permanent ceasefire on both fronts, leading into a diplomatic initiative to permanently solve both uh, the problems in the north, the question of what would happen with Gaza in the south, as well as some have suggested even 
a uh, agreement or even a peace treaty with Saudi Arabia and all of this uh, seems like a, a pipe dream at the moment that the Americans continue to pursue against uh, all signs that we have both from Hezbollah, from Hamas and from Israel and it seems very unlikely that th this will succeed in the coming weeks, months or even years ahead to be honest. After almost two decades of failure of this UN resolution 1701 and no attempt whatsoever by the international community, the United States or France, uh, who, are, who are all uh, heavily involved in Lebanon, to correct these mistakes, to evict Hezbollah from uh, southern Lebanon, to uh, take the arms from Hezbollah and, and uh, act according to uh, UN Resolution 1701. Now, once again, the international community seems set to repeat the mistakes of the past and once again call for a ceasefire that would bind the hands of Israel, which is a democracy and will act according to the uh, agreements that it uh, ratifies. But Hezbollah would be again uh, free to continue what it has uh, been doing, to rearm, to um, again build its strength for the next round. And meanwhile, this threat would continue hanging over the heads of the residents of northern Israel. While it's clear that the international community didn't learn from the mistakes of the past, it remains to be seen whether the Israeli government will repeat those mistakes. To follow the news about the ceasefire on Israel's northern front, as well as all the other news uh, around Israel and the broader Middle East, visit us on allisrael.com, visit our YouTube channel and all the other social media channels.